If I knew these things when I first started, man, that would have saved me a lot of time and I would have seen results a lot quicker than I did. channel if you are new here my name is Amanda also known as Sassy Sunflower and I'm an online certified personal trainer I like to make video videos about fitness style sometimes that's a new thing and just you know food veganism all that fun stuff so if you're new and you are not already subscribed to my channel definitely hit that subscribe button below so today's video is gonna be all about my top five biggest fitness mistakes or things that I wish I knew when I first started if I knew these things when I first started, man, that would have saved me a lot of time and I would have seen results a lot quicker than I did. But we live and learn and I was able to learn and now I can share with you all the things that I wish I knew so you can learn from my mistakes and see results so much quicker. So my first mistake that I made so often and even made, you know, in probably in like the middle of my fitness journey, not even just the beginning, which is too much volume and overtraining. So what this means was instead of really, you know, narrowing down my goals or doing specific compound movements and focusing on those, I was just doing so much in one session. I would do multiple, multiple supersets, multiple different exercises, band work, cardio, just so much stuff packed into one session where like by the end of the session, I was totally out of breath, totally wiped out. And you can still get like those feelings from a balanced good workout that's not too much. But these I was just like doing way too much in one session. And I eventually learned and realized that you want to really utilize the time that you have at the gym. You don't want to jam pack every exercise you can think of for glutes on your glute day. You wanna pick and choose, pick the ones that are gonna that are best suited for your goals, the ones you like the best, just the ones that you're most comfortable with, and then just do those and alternate your accessory moves every week because overtraining and super, super high volume exercises will, at the end of the day, even negate your progress. You can stunt your own progress by training too hard. Your muscles are just too fatigued, they can't keep up with what you're doing, they don't have enough time to recover, and they break down instead of building. So overtraining is definitely something to watch out for. You want super balanced exercises. You do not wanna go so crazy all the time. Learn from my mistakes. So another thing that I wish I knew that I made the mistake of in the beginning of my fitness journey is that severe calorie restriction is not necessary to lose weight. Yes, you do need a calorie deficit ultimately at the end of the day to see weight loss because weight loss really just comes down to calories in versus calories out. But that doesn't mean that you have to do it solely through food and create this huge deficit and feel like you're restricting yourself and eat like borderline starvation level type calories. When I first started my fitness journey, I wanted to lose weight. That was my main goal at that time. And I was eating around 1200 calories a day, which was not enough. I can now know that that was not enough. And I remember feeling super like tired after my workouts, lightheaded sometimes because I was also overtraining. So it was like this combination of those two things was just, it was not good but you don't need to heavily restrict your calories to see weight loss results. You can create part of that calorie deficit through exercise by doing a combination of high intensity interval training and low intensity steady state cardio. You, you can, like I said, you don't have to create that def deficit solely through food. You can do a mixture of food and a mixture of exercise to create a really good deficit for yourself without feeling like you're restricting yourself or eating such a low amount of calories where you're getting lightheaded during your workouts. Please don't do that. Do not do that. So this next one kind of goes back a little bit to what I was talking about in the first point about overtraining. And this one is that progressive overload is key for muscle growth. Absolutely key. It doesn't matter. You could be doing, you know, squats, deadlifts, hip thrust, glute isolation exercises, all of those things. But if you're not progressively overloading, which is it's steadily increasing the weight or amount of reps that you do over time, you you're gonna stunt your results and you're not gonna see as many gains as you would if you were utilizing progressive overload. So when I started to really take that seriously, and that was really honestly within the past year, to be honest, that was when I really learned about progressive overload and really utilized it and saw so many, so many gains. So basically what I did was I took, I made a spreadsheet and I used it on my phone and I would, all the exercises that I wanted to keep track of my weight, I put in this spreadsheet. So for me it was deadlifts, hip thrusts, squats, 
leg press and lat pull down, bicep curls, and dumbbell shoulder press are those ones that I'm paying attention to currently right now. Um, and every session I would log the weight that I used and how much weight that I would use in the date. And I would keep track of it that way so that every, the next session or every two sessions as I progressively increase the amount of weight that I was using, I would log it so I could see, okay, let me, you know, for hip thrust, let me up this by only five reps this time. Or say, I did 270 last week for four, let me do 270 this week for five. You have to be steadily increasing what you're doing in some capacity, improving your form, doing more reps at the same weight, increasing the weight, but using less reps. Progressive overload is so important for muscle growth. And like I said, you could be doing all those exercises that I talked about, but if you're keeping the weight and the rep, rep amount the same and you're not changing it ever at all, then you're really stunting your own progress. You could see gains, but you're not gonna see the kind of muscle growth you really want if you're not progressively overloading. It is very, very important for muscle growth. And kind of on like the same topic as progressive overload, it goes back to form and form something that I, also learned within the past couple of years, especially when I got certified as a trainer, is that form is more important than everything. So you might, you know, your ego might want you to do five more reps than you had originally planned because you feel like you really want to get it done. Or your ego wants you to do 10 more pounds than you originally planned because it looked, the plates look better on the bar. But if your form is trash, you could one, really hurt yourself, but two, you're again, minimizing the amount of gains that you can get and you're cutting, you're cutting yourself short, honestly. You're selling yourself short. So you wanna, form is more important than anything. It's more important than weight, it's more important than a rep range, it's more important than anything. So put your ego down, learn from me, because in the past I used to wanna do super, super heavy, and I would do stuff that I wasn't ready for, weight that I wasn't ready for, my form was off, and then I would get hurt, or I would sprain something, or just something wouldn't feel right, and it would set you back. And when you get hurt, then you have to wait for that to heal, and then you can't work out as much, and then that's less gains for you. So please, Remember how important form is, even if that means using weight that doesn't look as good on the bar or is not as much as you want it to be. You'll get to that weight that you want to be as long as you utilize progressive overload, but keep your form in check. Do not hurt yourself. This video is really starting to feel like me lecturing you guys, but seriously, learn from my mistakes because I've made all these mistakes and I've thankfully I have learned from them. So I am passing this knowledge onto you so you can see all of the most beautiful gains in the world without hurting yourself and being sustainable and healthy. And my last fitness mistake and thing that I wish I knew when I first started is that long-term consistency is so much more important and so, it just, it's so much more important than daily perfection. You do not need to be 100% on your shit every single day to see results. I mean, my fitness journey is filled with days off, alcohol, binge eating, junk food, treat meals, going out with friends, restaurants, parties, vacations, you name it. And the reason I've still continued to see really awesome results is because I was consistent over the long term. I was, I stopped, when I stopped stressing myself about being perfect every single day and hitting my macros every day and going to the gym constantly all the time, that's when I really started to see solid results that lasted a long time because I shifted my focus. When, and it stresses, in it gives you less stress when you're less focused on being perfect every single day. And when you're less stressed, it gives your body more of a chance to build muscle and burn fat and see the results that you're looking for. You, like I said, you don't need to be perfect every single day. This is probably one of the biggest things that I wish I had learned early on because it would have saved me so much time and so much stress and anxiety over hitting my macros and getting this workout in and just, I just can't stress how, how important it is to remember that you don't need to be perfect every single day. If you're consistent over a long-term period, that cheat meal you had Friday night's not gonna matter. That vacation that you took over the summer's not gonna matter. That night out with your friends and you drank too much alcohol, it's not gonna matter in the long run because with consistency comes results. As long as you're consistent over time, you will see results. Trust me on that because I used to not that I used to not be able to let that click in my head. I used to not really see that. To me, it was like, I need to be perfect every single day. I need to hit my macros every single day. No cheat meals, no going out to eat, no alcohol, no this, no that. And you would just limit yourself of so much potentially fun opportunities. I mean, if you don't want to drink, if you you know want to eat as healthy as possible all the time, all the power to you. But I just want that to come from a healthy place and not a mindset of that you need to be perfect every day because you don't and you still will see results. So I think that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys got something out of it. Sorry I turned into like 
personal trainer mom mode and I started lecturing you, but seriously, I make this video because I want you guys to know the mistakes that I made. I'm not perfect. I didn't start my fitness journey out being perfect. I had to learn things along the way too. So I'm hoping that the things that I wish I knew and the mistakes that I made sharing them and how I changed them can help you guys too with your fitness journeys. So like I said, if you are not already subscribed to my channel and you like my content and you want to see more, definitely hit that subscribe button or even hit the like, bu like button below. It helps me out so much. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you. I appreciate you and your support so much more than you will ever, ever know. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll put my app up here so you don't miss any content from me. And yeah, I think that'll do it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh.